Let's take a few moments to learn how to form the present perfect tense in German using irregular or mixed verbs. As usual, we'll begin the lecture with an example of how to form the present perfect tense in English. Once we're done with that, we will look at that same sentence translated into German. We'll see that the past participle is an essential part of the present perfect tense, and that irregular and weak verbs sort of have characteristics of both regular and strong verbs. So what we'll do today is we'll look at how to form the past participle of irregular verbs once we do a review of both regular and strong verbs. Now, finally, once, we'll, uh, once we're done with all of that, we'll conclude our lecture with a discussion of when to use the auxiliary verb sein and when to use the auxiliary verb haben when forming the present perfect tense. So the sentence you see on the screen, I know the man, is in the present tense. Uh, it reports on an action that's happening right now, in the present moment. I know the man. The subject, I, first person singular, personal pronoun, uh, agrees with the verb, uh, first person singular, present tense verb. I know the man. Now, if I want to take this present tense sentence and change it into the present perfect, I'll need to do two things. First, the verb no needs to be changed into the past participle, so no becomes known. The second thing I need to do is, once I've gotten, I've changed the verb into a past participle, I still need to have some verb that, uh, that agrees with the subject of the sentence. In this case, I'm going to use the first person singular present tense auxiliary verb, have. So, I have known the man. Uh, this present tense, or excuse me, this present perfect tense construction, as you'll see, is then essentially formed of, uh, of two components. First, I have a past participle. And second, I have an auxiliary verb that agrees with the subject of the sentence. The same construction of, a, of an auxiliary verb and the past participle can be found in German. And let me walk you through those steps again. So here on the screen, you see the translation of the English sentence, I know the man, ich kenne den Mann. Ich, first person singular personal pronoun, agrees with the verb kenne, a first person singular present tense verb. Now, if I want to take this present tense sentence and change it into the present perfect tense, I need to do two things. First thing is, I need to take the verb kenne and remove it from the second position. I'll get to the, and and we'll move it to the end of the sentence and turn it into a into a uh, into the past participle. And we'll get to that stage in just a second. But once I remove it from the second position, that leaves a gap in the sentence that I need to fill with an auxiliary verb. Here I'm going to use the auxiliary verb ha, uh, habe, which agrees with the subject of the sentence. Subject ish first person singular personal pronoun agrees with the first person singular present tense auxiliary verb habe. So, ich habe den Mann. So, what are we going to do, however, with the verb that we took out of the second position, kenne? We're going to change it into a past participle. So, kenne goes to gekannt. And we drop that in at the, the past participle at the very end of the sentence. And we get essentially what we had in English as a, as, as a present perfect uh, construction that has two components. The past participle, gekant, at the end of the sentence or at the end of the clause. And in the second position, agreeing with the subject of the sentence, uh, habe, a first person singular present tense auxiliary verb. Just as a way of quick review, Weak verbs, uh, the past participles of weak verbs, are generally formed by removing the stem of the, of the verb, for instance, hören, removing the stem hör, adding a ge prefix to it, and a suffix or an ending, a t or an et, depending upon the quality or nature of the verb stem. So you get a construction like gehört or gesagt. Or gewartet. The main thing to note is that there's a GE prefix 
in a T or ET suffix, and that the, the, the vowel in the stem does not change. Now, if you look at strong verbs, strong verbs also have a GE prefix, but it lacks the T or ET suffix or ending. You'll also notice that the vowel in the, in the, the verb stem usually changes. So, for instance, um, the verb bison changes from an EI to an I. Bison, gebissen. Uh, fliegen changes from an IE to an O. Fliegen, geflogen. So the GE prefix is, is there. The, the EN ending is different than the weak verbs. And there's also a change in the quality of the, uh, of the vowel uh, that's found in the verb stem. Now, comparing all these things side by side, you'll see that a weak verb, uh, again, has a GE prefix, a T suffix, and that the, the stem vowel chain stays the same. Strong verbs have a GE prefix, they do not add a, a T suffix, and that the stem vowel usually changes. Now, irregular verbs sort of manifest characteristics of both weak and strong verbs. Denken, the E uh, in the, in the uh, stem of the vowel, uh, the vowel in the stem of the verb changes from an E to an A, like it does in a strong verb, but it adds a GE and a T, a GE prefix and a T suffix, like a weak verb does. Same thing with bringen, I bringen, I goes to an A, adds a GE prefix and a T suffix. And Kennan, the one we've been looking at in our example at the beginning of this video, changes from an E to an A and adds a GE prefix and a T suffix. So, to summarize, irregular verbs manifest characteristics of both weak and strong verbs. Generally, irregular verbs can be found in the same list that you will find uh, strong verbs in. Um, and these are at the back of the book if you have it or can be found uh, through a search on the internet. Now, finally, a question of when do I use the auxiliary verb haben, when do I use the auxiliary verb sein? Uh, a general rule of thumb is if your verb or the participle shows motion, in this instance on the screen, ich bin im Auto gefahren, I drove in the auto, I drove in, in, in the car. Uh, motion is, is, is indicated. I'm moving from point A to point B in my car. So if the participle shows motion, I use a, some form of sein as the auxiliary verb. Ich bin. Now, another rule of thumb is if the participle shows a change of condition. Uh, ich bin Polizist geworden. I became a police officer. One instance, I'm, I'm a college professor. Next one, I'm a a police officer. Um, the geworden shows a change of condition. The past participle of werden is geworden. So I use a form of sein as an auxiliary verb. Ich bin Polizist geworden. Now, everything else generally uses the auxiliary verb haben. Ich habe sie gesehen. I have seen her or I've seen them. There is no motion involved. There is no change of condition involved. Gesehen, the past participle of sehen or to see, is reporting on the action of me seeing this person or seeing these people. So um, since there's no motion or change of condition, I use the auxiliary verb haben. Now, that being said, there are, of course, a few small exceptions. And those are some verbs like sein itself, bleiben, to remain, or passieren, happen to, take sein as an auxiliary verb automatically. So the, the sentence you see on the screen, ich bin in Berlin gewesen, I was in Berlin. Gewesen is the past participle of sein. So since it is the past participle of sein, uh, the past participle of sein, I'm going to use some form of sein as the auxiliary verb in the second position. Ich bin in Berlin gewesen. So and that concludes our discussion of the present of the present perfect tense using a regular or weak, um, or excuse me, a regular or mixed verbs.